one and they go, well, have you seen that? And you go, what? well, no, I haven't. Mm -hmm. If you do that again, would you like to be working with that person? This is why your daily 10-4 is 10 contacts, 10 new names into your database, 10 cards, and 10, yeah, study the inventory. No substitute for studying the inventory, right? So now if you focus on one building, focus on a couple of buildings, do this and really study these, can you see how that totally helps you? Because now I'm gonna sit down with you, we're gonna look at the computer and you're gonna say, have you seen this unit? And you go, no, I haven't, but you know something? I'm quite familiar with several units in this building, and I like the building a lot. It's really well run. It's got a beautiful um, shuffleboard court right out there by the ocean, and it's got a very nice pool and jacuzzi, and it's run very well. It does have a lot of vacation rentals, so a very good vacation rental history. It's okay with me that you haven't seen this unit because you know so much about the building, you see. Right, do you yeah. see where I'm going? So becoming familiar with our inventory is crucial, mm -hmm. right? And now you can actually choose, you can say, okay, I know everything there is to know about this building, I'm gonna start marketing to this building. I'm gonna buy, the, not buy, you can get the email list from an escrow company for this building that you just studied and go, did you know that this building has a higher occupancy rate of owner occupants than any other building in the neighborhood? I'd love to help you sell your home if you're interested or whatever you might want to say. Did you know, right? You could do all sorts of funny little facts about that building and share it with them. You can let them know what the most recent sale was. Do you see where I'm going? So now you're marketing to the people and letting them know that you know a lot about their building and want to help them sell their property. You're doing an open house there, do a quick email, uh, excuse me, a postcard, and say, I'm gonna be doing an open house and it's especially for everybody who's here. I want you all to know what's available in the building so you can tell your friends about this unit that's now on the market. Come and we'll have a drawing for a $25 gift card to Starbucks. See that? That, that's how you get in, right? The more you can communicate with that building, the more they're gonna go, oh, she's like, that Gabriella, she really knows this building. We should call her, honey. That's working with your um, non-mets. Sports team mailing lists. Who here has children? School-age children. Okay, so the two of you have that advantage, right? If they're on a sports team and whatnot, does that sports team all share their emails and do they communicate with each other? Can you, I don't want you to just blatantly start sending them real estate information because they'll know what you're doing, mm -hmm. but could you sponsor something for that team? Yeah. Could you be the one who like, I don't know, brings the water every practice and you get to smear your logo on the water cooler, I'm making it up, right? Um, but just by being the one to do that, being the one who communicates practices and changes in practice, do you have a nice logo at the bottom of your email, right? Because you can get those from us, that kind of advertises, oh, I'm in real estate. <laughs> yeah, and so um, taking advantage of those kinds of things and making that your target Targeted. farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, house of Worship, definitely, right? Um, your community there, can you volunteer there? Can you participate? Do some um, churches or synagogues have newsletters? Can you participate in that? Can you advertise in the newsletter? What can you do to become more present um, uh, at the House of Worship? LinkedIn contacts? Um, I don't know how to work LinkedIn, I'm gonna admit it to you right now. I, when it first started, it was so bizarre. When it first started, we would send blanket requests out to people, say, would you write a nice thing about me, please? Like, I don't even know you, and you're asking me to rank you in LinkedIn? Like, I'm not gonna do that. So I didn't like LinkedIn the way it got started. From what I understand now, it's very different. It's become more legitimate and all of that. So if you know how to work LinkedIn, how can you take advantage of um, the contacts you have in LinkedIn, right? 
Pardon me? Speak to Gina Duncan. Holy cow. Okay, she she's a very link LinkedIn expert. Okay, <laughs> we need to ask her to give us a seminar. She, she should do a hot topic on LinkedIn. Yes, she should. That would be a good, that's a good suggestion. All right. Um, other kinds of clubs or organizations. I belong to two book clubs. Yeah, I'm, I'm a literature major and I like to read, so. <laughs> and I have done three deals out of two book clubs. Like, there's eight women in one and six in the other. So three deals. On six different. <laughs> it's like amazing, right? Yeah. Now, did that happen instantly? No. Um, did I make a big deal about it? No. I've done a deal for people that I'm on boards with. Not because I talk about being a realtor a lot, but sometimes it comes up and they go, well, Mary, you're a realtor. What, you know, what's your expertise? What's your opinion about that? It comes up. So um, all those organizations, get more involved, participate, and see how you can engage. Facebook, Twitter, and blog followers. Well, definitely Facebook. And um, did you know if you're connected on the, what is the thing? Man. No, in, in, in Facebook. Instagram? Well, there's. Oh, I was just Instagram. saying, if you go into the Messenger, thank you, the Messenger app for Facebook, mm -hmm. you can call people by just hitting the phone icon. You might not have their phone number, right? Yeah. But they've got it in there if they're a Messenger, and now you can actually call people that way. Mm -hmm. And then does the phone number appear on your phone? Wow. Kind of sneaky, sneaky, yeah. sneaky. So can you make an attempt to actually call your Facebook contacts? Yeah, if you know, especially if they've signed up for Messenger, right? Um, Twitter. I don't know anything about Twitter. I try to stay away from this. Anybody here do Twitter? No. Right? It's so polit. It's really political, political, right? It's really that's really what it's become. So you just didn't start out that way. It's yeah. kind of interesting. And we've talked about geographic farms. Can anybody think of anything else while they're while we're here talking about this? Well, I think a couple of us um, we Uber in the evenings. Mm -hmm. So like I hand out business cards. Okay, so that would that wouldn't be farming, right? Farm. We're talking about. The I'm massive. sorry, because we still haven't met. So I'm sorry. I'm, um, I'm sorry. that's an interesting yes, but we were talking about like a group, right? Like, what can you do on a group sorry. basis? But let's talk about that. For those of you who drive, drive Uber, um, the challenge is it's really easy to give the information out. It's hard to it give is. it back. Mm -hmm. How do you think your mobile app might change that? Yeah. Could you hand your phone to the, could you hit share, hand your phone to the guy mm -hmm. and say, could you put your phone number in and I'll text you that app and put your name too, so I know you, whose phone number that is. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Do you with see you. what I'm saying? I, I agree. My only concern um, was, was just a, a privacy concern from the rider, right? You know, you can have wonderful conversation, but this is kind of really me giving a call is non confrontational. If they do have an interest, then they'll, they'll, they'll give me that. Very different. I'm just yeah. saying yeah. if you get into that conversation level of conversation that, oh, I am interested. Yeah. And um, love more information, mm -hmm. great. The easiest way I can help you right up front is to share my app with you, right? So I'm just trying to think of a way that you could, yeah. what can you do literally in the car that I think you're spot on. Is, makes it a little easier. Another idea um, somebody had is get the um, Homes and Land magazines. Yeah, you know, you can take those anywhere. They're free, right? And you staple your business card in the upper corner and you carry those in your Uber. And you say, well, here's our most recent copy of Homes and Land magazine. Um, that might interest you. Take a look. That's clever. And there's your business card <laughs> right clever. on top, right? That's really clever, Yeah, actually. so now they go, oh, cool. Thank well, you so much, like right? So um, don't take them all <laughs> from, the, from the stand, right? Leave three wherever right. you're taking them from. I've got my sources. I know. I've got my Maui gold all day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know where they are, right? Yeah. So, uh, right, what are the, what's the thing that you can do to provide extra value so it's not just a business card? What if you put a little pamphlet together that talks about buying, business, buying uh, real estate on Maui, mm -hmm. right? Or a little pamphlet about 
what is required when you buy vacation rental condos because that's what a lot of those people are going to be thinking about right you could put a whole little thing together and um, and provide interesting information and make yourself the expert right so you say, wow that's kind of that's kind of interesting let's call this guy Everybody knows at this point that people are driving Uber to supplement their income, right? It's not a, it's, it's kind it's of common. common yeah. No, nope, very, very common anymore. So nice, good for you. Um, getting creative. All right. It's not like flyers, like in the neighborhood, like for now. I know because I started a whole business that way, and, <laughs> and my husband and I got oh, the wow. postmaster general wrote to us and wow. said cease and desist. <laughs> but we got the business started, so. <laughs> you gotta do what you Hold gotta on. do. You can stick it in the side in the flag. You can stick it in the flag. That's correct. Ooh, yes, okay. you can also go up to the door and put it under the mat, or you know, stick it in the screen door or whatever you want. Yes, you can, or do use a door hanger. Um, oh, yes. Wow, oh, a door hanger. Right? Okay. Yeah. Door. You know, like it just you put it on. A door hanger. Yeah, it's got like a hole in it. And just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. It. All right. It's just an easy way to leave something at a door. Yeah. Um, so what does oh, it say no, here? Yeah. Technology <laughs> tip: Both eEdge and your branded KW app will instantly notify you if you're in your preferred format, either email or text when someone registers on your website or app, and it'll notify you when that person is browsing. It's hysterical. Uh, so you don't want to call them up and go, hi, I right. see that you're on the app in the real estate, right? That's a little, little, little bit <laughs> swoopy. So don't do that. But could you call the next day and say, hey, I just wanted to be in touch and see how things are going. And um, I know we talked about a month ago, you were kind of thinking about buying. How's that going? Well, as a matter of fact, I was looking last night. Oh, what were you looking at? <laughs> right? That's the idea. So don't tell people that you're stopping them. Um, but you are. You, you can be notified when people are on. I get them. All, uh, I do. I get them, right? And I go, oh, oh not her again, because she's not buying. <laughs> <laughs> Does it automatically notify you, or do uh -huh. you have to set that up? No, I didn't set that up. Okay. It just does it. Cool. Yeah. So the goals of a contact is to ask for their business, um, to ask for their referrals and provide value and gather more information to build and nurture the relationship, right? So if you've got um, your database open and you don't have their children's names in there, might you try to have a conversation to say, now I know you have kids. How old are your kids? I don't know, what are their names? What do they like to do? What do you, what do you, you must be a really busy guy taking care of two teenagers. Oh my God, yeah, my one's into soccer and the other one's into horseback riding and da, 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 da. And you're like taking notes. Yeah, as a matter of fact, my daughter's up for a, a championship da, 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 next Saturday. Bingo, I'm sending a card, right? All the best to your daughter's championship ride and maybe I follow up the next week and go how did she do I'm just so curious mm. how cute is that mm -hmm. now it's something to talk about now you're suddenly having a relationship because mm. you're actually sincerely interested except if the system hadn't remind you you wouldn't have called again right but you can set the system to remind you to call again and follow up you can even write what am I calling about follow up on the daughter's Championship equestrian thing. This is command or command. Either command or e edge. Okay. And, and, and virtually any database system, any contact relationship management system (CRM) will do this if you enter the data. You just have to use it. So it's there. Very cool. Yes, command does that. <clears throat> so. Uh, one of the things that I encourage you to do in asking for a referral or asking for contacts is 
to come up with a way for you to always do that from now on. You are not going to meet people anymore and not let them know that you're a realtor. <laughs> and it takes a while to get that into your brain, right, and to build that habit. So the best way is, how are you going to do that? And you literally have to go and try different ways. And you go, oh, I hated that. I'm not doing that one again. Right? That didn't work for me. To give you an idea, there's a, a realtor up in a country area. His name's Fred Haywood. He was quite the famous realtor for quite a long time. And he was an um, Olympic swimmer. And uh, he was a famous um, windsurfer on the North Shore, and he would get most of his business by just walking around town and schmoozing with people. But what he would do is, he would go, hey Fred, how's it going? And he goes, well, it'd be great if you bought a house for me today. <laughs> that was his comeback. Always, always, and people would get so tired of it and say, Fred, you say that all the time. He goes, well, it's true. What do you think? How do you think I live? I would be a lot better if you bought her, sold a house with me today. Do you know anybody who needs to do it? And they laugh, and then on it goes. I love it. Who are they going to think of to do real estate? Yeah. Fred! <laughs> so, he was, that was his way, right? But, if you, when you have a phone conversation, get into the habit of anyone you meet, hey, so great talking to you. Remember, help me build my business. Do you know anybody needs to buy or sell real estate? No? Okay, great. Well, let, keep me in mind, would you? What if you just added that in every time? Do you see where I'm going? You need to develop that habit. You need to be the one to always say, hey, do you know anybody? Help me build my business. Do you know anybody who needs to do real estate? And then be quiet. <laughs> right? So I encourage you to get into like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to write at the end of the day? Did I do it? Oh, no, I met three people today and I forgot. I met that lady in the grocery store and I didn't say a thing. <laughs> that's where you want to go. No, the lady in the grocery store. Take That's one of your contacts for the day. Right? Whoever you're talking to. That's your contacts. So your contacts can be totally natural. They don't have to be all on the telephone. They can just be totally who you meet today. Awesome. All right. So um, in order to build our database, we are going to need their name, their address, their email, their phone numbers. Um, social media is helpful. Marital status, children, pets. Do they own or rent? The length of time they've been in their current house. All those bits of data would be very useful, and uh, you want to see if you can collect those over time. So the more you build information about people, the more you can connect with them and have reason to call, hmm. right? And if you know that somebody's been in their home for nine years, could you make a phone call and say, hey, I'm just calling around to all my um, people in my database, I'm taking a survey. I want to know if you're living in your dream forever home. Um, I go, what? My dream forever? No, no way. Really? Where would you move to if you wanted to find your dream forever home? Oh, I always want to live in Kula. Kula, really? And what are you looking for in Kula? What would be your dream home? Right? You get them to, this is, what's this called? This is your big Y, right? And if you make a paint a picture, help them paint a picture, could you help them start to think about this, right? So um, that's a, there's a call, but only if you know that they're, they're, well, actually you can call anybody and do that, right? Are you living in your dream forever? Yeah. Okay, so now we're supposed to look at a database spreadsheet. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna go to um, but you, I want you to make some notes. So if you would get um, a piece of paper out and just start jotting down, or wherever you've been keeping track of the names and um, people that you want to enter into your database. So maybe start making a list of the people that you called today or tried to call today. 
and he's going for a break, and it's 11.20. Maybe that's a good idea, just to have a break. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else need a little break? Right. Let's take a five-minute break. Long-winded story is I'm, I'm just in a, um, you know, with the the Pugani golf courses. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm renting a little little oh, house right cool. before. That's so, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, awesome. okay. yeah. yeah. So I'm just um, it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. beautiful okay. properties yeah. with fruit trees everywhere. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, uh, we can activate you. Uh, he was, he was so really, look, I'm on way over paying, but I'm, which means you I just get look, in the it, he, 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 even let me stay in that evening, yeah. yeah. right? Wow. So, yeah. yeah. There's nothing was, to do but wait. That's just one bedroom. It's it's a it's a one bedroom. Yeah, I've got a little kitchen. Your license. Literally sort of people private, people I mean, for I, on their website, well, private is my own door, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, my only complaint is I'm a whole other street because no, he's, he's, got, he's got another, I don't know, the guy takes the, the driver. Your license is issued I mean, by the state government. Yeah, that's what it would be a good state neighbor, that's what we said back yesterday. So they don't leave anything in my call. I mean, I did the copper checks, so they'll get it tomorrow. They're going to neighbor that emailed us like a guy, I don't know, something like that. 
So you won't be here Friday. Okay, so no, I don't have a binder here. They're all in the Kahalui office. So will you come next week? But you, you, you're up in it. Oh, Tuesday. no, there's no classes next week. There's one on Monday? Oh. I thought so, too. But if you come out, we're going to show up when the classes are. But we're just going to ask them. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay, Monday, Wednesday. Yes, I don't know. My man wants to listen. I know they want to work with you. Uh, there's a wonderful Ignite flyer out, so um, let's get that from Sam when we're done, and you can just go by that. Okay. Let's get her, get you the Ignite flyer. Yes. We were in New York, and he was like, big bike ride, and I'm just like, we went through the first with a mic, Jack. train up to New York every Tuesday and Thursday, and it's got all tools. So, two and a half hour train ride. I get to New York, and I come into Penn Station, and then I take a train down into, I go into Brooklyn, which is where kind of the technology center was. Um, every once in a while, I'd run late, I take cabs, they all crazy. Like, that's, that's a whole other world. Yeah, but no, I love it. It's an exciting town. And then, uh, I don't want to take it. Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't want to take it. 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 That is the joy of Europe. It's Maybe like we, 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 how we change states yeah. is how they change countries, right? And it's just that easy. Well, and if you fly on like right well, that's here, what which is like kind of get some of their winding up the rubber band and you're good. Yeah. 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 So the first thing you'd want to do is you want to make a note every time that you tried so that you can at least see, oh, I've tried calling this person twice and <coughs> how else can I reach them, whatever else. So some history for yourself of what I did with that person. Um, and then the second thing you might want to do is um, the three people that we got as leads, now you're going to categorize those people as a buyer prospect or a seller prospect, right? Whatever whatever it is they're looking to do, that becomes pretty obvious. And then you might want to categorize them in other ways. Maybe this person is a neighbor, or maybe this person is in your family, or is from a, a group or a club that you know. In other words, how, how do you want to be able to identify them if you were to want to pull them out? So I've got on my list, I've got, <laughs> 
people that I invite to my Christmas party. I literally have my Christmas party list on my database, right? And that way I can do a mailing just to my Christmas party list. I have my past buyers and my sellers and I have prospective clients that I've worked with or, you know, so that I have that information about them. Uh, what else do I have? I have people in my book club. I, I identify them, book club one and book club two. Very original. Um, do you see where I'm going? I'm trying to be able to sort them that way. Yes. Silly question, but you can have a lead in multiple categories, correct? Yes. Okay. You can tag them multiple times. Um, so then I might go, okay, these are neighbors, or these are people from my son's sports team, or these are people, because now you can actually use the system to generate that list for you so that you can send them an email or do something separate just to that group, right? If you wanted to communicate just to that group. You might also make a category that is like, these people uh, might be interested in NICU in the next year or two. Who needed this? It's the Ignite schedule. I'll take one too. I asked for enough here. You bet. One more coming. Is this, is this subject to change? Thank you. No. Okay. No, but note aside, I am not Paomi. So we're on number two here. And number three is this Friday. And number four is. Monday. Is that Monday? Mm -hmm. Thank you. There you go. And then we don't have one again for the rest because next week is shorter week. So um, you get where I'm going is to categorize. So you've got people who are interested, um, but they're not interested for a couple of years. So we call those, there's two ways you can people categorize them. You can have your A, B, or C group, like that's a lead, but they're a B group. And the B group is however you define it. So you need to write it down somewhere. This is how I define my B group. Like they're at least a year or two out. And then my C group is they're probably three to five years out. Now, in other markets, when somebody says to you, um, somebody's not going to buy or sell for three to five years out, they don't even call those a lead. We do because we meet people who are here visiting and they say, oh, we can't wait to buy on Maui. Oh, what's stopping you from buying on Maui? And they go, well, we just put a kid in college and we have another one finishing, so we need all the kids done with college before we can afford to buy. Awesome. And your kid just started college? Great. I want to be the one to sell you a property in four years when your kid's graduated, so I'd love to stay in touch and let you know what's going on here in the market and be the one to help you do that. You will? Yeah. I'd really like to do that. How hard is it to put them on your database, call them every now and then, write down that the kid, one kid is graduating soon and the other one just entered college? Now you can call up, right, follow up with their visit to your open house and ask them about the kids. And, now tell me about this one kid you said that is about to graduate college. Where, what, what's this kid's name? And, and where are they? What school are they in? And what are they studying? And what do you think they're going to do when they're done? And, and then a year from later, you find out that that kid moved back home. And you go, uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Is this kid moving to marry with you? <laughs> Starting a real, a real estate career. Yeah. So you get, right? You're building a relationship. And the more information you have, the better. But you categorize this person to see. Is this person worth staying in touch with? Yes. Yeah, you know that their neighbor's kids already graduated and they're thinking of moving to Maui and they just gave their name, your name to the neighbor. Love it. Does that happen? Yeah. Yeah, it does. So there's just something about our destination here that makes it very popular and you just never know where people are coming from. We actually do. The number one destination or source is California. Right? 50% of our buyers are from out of state. 50% of our buyers. And the majority come from California number one, Washington state number two, and Texas number three. Number four is Oregon, and then uh, various and sundry other places. Foreign buyers only represent 10% of 
meaning foreign, not US-based, right? Predominantly Canadian. Um, and that depends a lot on the fluctuation of the Canadian dollar. Um, but, so you've categorized them either A, like they're gonna buy this year, or B, from one to two and a half, whatever you decide to make it. You can call them hot, warm, and cold. The idea is that you categorize people the moment you hear they have an interest like that. And what is the point of categorizing them? Prioritization. Thank you, exactly. This is called your pipeline. These people are gonna do real estate with you. And chances are they will probably do it a little sooner than they told you. That's usually what happens because when people have a dream and they have an idea, they keep thinking about it. Oh, come on, honey, let's just do it now. And so people come over and they say, we vacation here every year anywhere. We're gonna buy the condo now and then we'll be ready. It'll be there when we retire. A lot of people do that. So, um, so do you get the idea? Categorizing them, if they're a lead, categorize them, but you have to decide what that means. And then there is, well, how did I get to know this person? Well, I met him through an open house. Or I, however else you might, whatever group you might want to put them in. Is this beginning to make some sense? Mm -hmm. So, if you took the names that you called yesterday and today and have them on your list, what would you categorize them as? Um, so go down your list and do that and see if it makes sense. Go. And then I'm going to show you how to do it in here. So I make a list here. Yeah, just make a list of your of the people you call. Yeah, just all the ones you call all the ones you you call because even the ones you called and didn't have a conversation with can you put them in a category these are this is a friend this is a work associate this is a my mother so what category would you put someone who says they want to live on the island for a year and then they'll figure out what area they want to live in, um, but they keep going to open houses, uh, you know, or condos in Lahaina near the ocean. Like, they're doing, they're telling you one thing, but they're doing another. Warm. I, I consider them pretty hot. Like, they're ready to buy. If they're not spending the time looking. Yeah. So what are you doing to help them? So I would make that a hot lead, because a hot lead to me is anybody who will buy within a year. Okay. And it sounds to me, I mean, that, Right, things go a little slower here, right? In California, a hot lead would be somebody who's buying in 60 days. Yeah. Uh, we, I mean, if you run into one of those, that's like a burning <laughs> lead, right? Yeah. So uh, hot to me means anybody that, you know, I'm gonna start talking to about buying. So am I communicating with this person? Am I um, having you sit down? What's your job description? Lead generating, lead follow-up, and number three, Appointments. Your objective in all of your conversations is to get an appointment. Because if you can get the person to sit down and talk with you about real estate, they're pretty serious. They're pretty serious. Now you have to offer value. You're not sitting down with them to sell them something. You're sitting down with them, let me just take some time to help you understand how real estate works here and how our market is and, and maybe what the process is. So um, I wanna just be available to you. And are you available tomorrow afternoon at four? I could meet you for a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Would that work? As opposed to when are you available? Right, don't do that. You offer, would tomorrow afternoon at four work for you? Or I could do it Saturday morning around between 10 and 11. Does that work? Sure, yeah. I'll you, have a cup of coffee with you. Do you meet them in the office or do you meet them like I meet them anywhere. a drink or whatever? I meet them anywhere. I prefer not a drink. A bar is a little too casual, okay. but I sure do like Starbucks. Okay. Starbucks works great. I've actually pulled my folder out and given my buyer's presentation in a Starbucks. Do you bring like your laptop to show them? No, no, 
this meeting is not about looking at property. If you're okay. interested in looking at property, just come into the office. Because okay. I got these big screens here, and we can look at um, properties on the big screen. Yeah. Um, but you know something? I'm going to send you, I'm going to find out from you what it is exactly you're interested in, and I'm going to send you, set you up to get auto notifications of just the listings that I think are of interest to you. That'd be a great way to start. The only person I'm going to sit down and actually look at property with is ready to get in my car and start looking now because they're ready to buy. Okay. That's a client at that point, right? You've already signed them at that point? Yeah. Or we just did it. I mean, that's literally, I found somebody that hot, right? Mm -hmm. They're that ready that we're going to sit down and look at the inventory. Because in today's age, they've already looked. They've already yeah. picked, right? So They're already telling me what it is they want to look at. So, um, yes. I, I have a question. What makes our app better than Zillow? Well, for one thing, Zillow tracks you, and our app isn't going to track you and sell the data. So just okay. so you know that, okay. we don't do that. We track you, but we don't sell our data, right? Okay. We don't sell our data. We keep it to ourselves. So that's one thing. And number two, um, when you hit, you want more information, you're going to get me. So you're going to get somebody that you know answering your questions for you as opposed to the listing agent, which is what you'll get if you hit, or some agent who's paying for an ad to advertise on the Zillow listing. That's the difference. Now, if you use my app in a place other than Maui and you hit request for more information, you're going to get a local agent, a local Keller Williams agent. So if you want to continue to get me when you're back in Des Moines, shoot me a text and send me a screenshot or something of whatever you're interested in. But in Des Moines, it's not going to know that you want to know something from me. Does the Des Moines one uh, contact the local one and let us know about the referral? No. Mm -mm. No. No, it just goes to them. How it goes to them, I don't exactly know. So do I know that for sure? I don't actually. But I don't think there's. it makes the connection. Speak to someone about that. Yes, yes. speak to yeah. somebody about that. That's how it gets us. <laughs> Extra room. Okay. So what if you categorize these people? Start with the ones you talk to. Right? Did you come up with a category for them? Yep. Put a tag on them, whatever? Any questions? Here's one other thing that I do, and that is that I put everybody onto my SOI list. My SOI stands for Sphere of Influence, and, right, my circle. Everybody, and the reason I do that is when I want to turn them on to a campaign or when I want to do my real estate marketing, I don't want to have to go, oh, should I send this to my Christmas card list? Or the, did, I, did I put them on there already? Oh, how about this group over here? Did I put them on? Oh my gosh, now who's on this already? I just did this the other day. I looked at my newsletter list and it was like, I don't know who these people are. I deleted them all, went into my database, cleaned up my sphere of influence, right? Retagged people and set up my newsletter to go to my sphere of influence so that I don't have to think about it for marketing purposes. They're all gonna get the same newsletter. I'm not going to create separate newsletters for different groups. Do you see where I'm going here? So I make this general big category for marketing purposes to send my newsletter to. And then I've got these little pockets that I can pull out separately. Okay? Don't you find it really comical? I just got a text that someone's upset I haven't sent them the end yet from one of my phone calls. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, like seriously? You're not buying it. Okay. <laughs> so if somebody is not interested in buying or selling at this time, they want to shop. No, they don't. They're not interested. They're cold. Period. They're just cold. Right? So I would cr create a category that says cold. You could make them your D category. They're Ds. They're not interested in buying or selling right now. However, do you want to stay in touch with them and make sure you get referrals out of them? Oh, yes. yes. 
This is your database. You're going to get referrals as well as, depends what you ask for, right? Do you know anyone who needs to buy a home, sell a home, or invest in real estate right now that I could help? Okay, so how do we do this in here? This is the dashboard for command. And I'm going to go to contacts. And then I'm going to go to uh -huh. add a contact. This is very annoying here because it's so hard to see the screen. And I'm going to say this is Betty, full name Betty Buyer. When you work with me, you're going to realize Betty Buyer is very busy. She does a lot of stuff. And I'm going to, her email is Betty at, oops, at, that's pretty funny, at AOL.com. And then her mobile phone number is 808-250-1770. Don't tell my husband I'm using his phone number. It knows whether it's a real number or not. I used to put fake stuff in here and then it won't let me anymore. So I can't make a fake transaction to learn how to run a transaction and come in and call it 123 Main Street in Kahului because there is no, <laughs> it was highly annoying. So just be aware, as a result of GPS and everything else, it knows whether a phone number is real or not. It knows whether an address is real or not. So um, it'll try to correct you. Mark as a lead or add to selected pipe to sales pipeline. Well, I want to mark it. Betty is a lead 